Evening, folks. We're back, back with uh, the Football Outwear show, and it's time to talk NPL Victoria football. And, Craig, who's our first guest for tonight? Yeah, it's uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, the coach of Hume City, who have made a good start in NPL 1 this year. He is a friend of the show. He has been on before, uh, ex-Western United, and now the Hume City manager, Urson Gullum. Good evening to you. Good evening, gents. How are we? Very, Very well, mate. How are you? Good, Very well, you. Alison. How are you, mate? Good to have you on the show again. Good to be on. Now let's talk about... Um, well, first of all, Steve, you were at the game. So tell us a little bit about the game and um, then tell us... Then, then um, yeah, walk us through through what you experienced and saw. Yeah, an exciting match in the end. It was a bit of a slow burn in the first half and Hume definitely looked the better. I'm not just saying that because we've got you on camera at the moment, Alison. Hume definitely looked the better side in the first half, but conceded from a corner kick, which would have been quite frustrating, I'm sure, against the run of play with a former Hume City player nodding home beer hand alley bowl on 38 minutes. But straight after that, the, the Hume City side kicked into gear, the new signing Dylan McGlade scoring just three minutes later. And then it was a, uh, a volley of goals in the second half, really, with uh, Yared Rezo catching the eye, coming off the bench and scoring twice. A nice header for Brandon Lawton and a goal that really impressed me so much that it made my voice break was that uh, piece of skill by Josh Bingham. What a goal that was. That was a beauty. He must have been pretty happy with himself after that effort. Um, yeah, he's obviously, a, it was a fantastic goal by Josh. Um, and yeah, he's, he's, he's a very hard worker for, for the team. And I mean, he's one of the top players in the team in the fitness levels. So I've, I've tried to tell him a few times to stop running, but he's just, he's such a uh, player that does the right things for the team. And is a, he also, obviously he's not, he does a lot of selflessness runs into the box and works just effortlessly for the team, which it, it shows a well-deserved goal for him. Now, Urson, um, just go back into uh, obviously the club and obviously the season. Now you've uh, you've just uh, uh, had Cameron Watson come on board as your uh, as your assistant. Um, obviously, a very experienced uh, professional. Uh, you've you've worked uh, not worked with him, but I think I believe you've played certainly played against him over the years. Uh, how did that move come about, and uh, how's he settling into the uh, into the room? Yeah, Cam's. Um... Obviously, I've my juniors here in Victoria. We've always either played together or against one another, so we've had that friendship over the years. It's one of the great thing of playing football. We create good friends, and now obviously relationship was always thereabouts throughout my football career overseas. And obviously, heading into this coaching role that I I got appointed at Hume, and then leading into the new season, parted ways with our assistant Halil. Uh, for different reasons and then obviously it was just trying to find the perfect fit that suits our coaching staff at Hube City um, and I had obviously known Cam was at Brunswick Juventus um, as an assistant and when I approached him he obviously was interested but obviously declined because of the nature that he was in at the club he's been there for years and after a few bad results. Obviously, they parted ways with their coach and the opportunity arose for him to take the chance to come on board with Hume. And obviously, he suits our, our criteria and what we look for um, as a, an assistant. And I think, as you can see, we're a young bunch of coaches at Hume City, but we also you know, have very good, very good experiences abroad and internally in um, with Cam playing obviously in the A-League and myself and my goalkeeper coach Sav Savash that's played overseas so it's a good mixture of um, coaching staff that had a decent level of professionalism. Now Erson, I'm assuming it was a bit of a, a bonus stepping into the role late in last season because it would have given you a good opportunity to help prepare in the off season for this season coming and know what you needed in the squad and uh, make those tweaks in the off season, picking up those new recruits in the, in the off season, including McGlade, Mustafa, Maltby, Rezai. Uh, how have they settled into the team and, uh, and, and the group so far? And uh, how did that recruitment process go over the off season? Yeah, obviously you pointed out it was, I came in towards the back end of last season, last two games, and it wasn't easy, <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Fighting for relegation um, wasn't easy at all, but we 
the boys obviously got over the line and yeah into the leading into the new preseason we actually we had a lot of work to do um on the pitch and off the pitch there's no behind that the team obviously Hume City's got a great you know history in the National Premier League and where it found itself last year wasn't acceptable by any standards of the club um so it was it was a it was a process that for me it took a lot of hard work off season as soon as the last game of the season was done I was on I was working trying to find, learn players learn the competition understand um the system that is played in this competition more so um and finding the right players according to the according to what I believe as a coach what I want to play and and do so yeah a lot of phone calls a lot of messages a lot of um meetings and talking to agents I have I've got a list of probably 30 players where I've got their phone numbers and emails so it's just ticking off calling yes no and it's just a process and it's a, it's a new thing for me too so I felt like I was a manager at one stage as in an agent <laughs> so um yeah it's it was it was it was difficult we started pre-season early obviously compared to other players other teams which we needed to and one thing I love about this playing group they they really buy into you know what what I want and what we believe in as a club and they're a great bunch of boys and they make my job so much easier awesome well it's gone seven rounds into the um npl victoria season for 2023 there's the ladder we'll, vi- uh, we'll very quickly whiz through the results and it started a lot of goals this round um gents um bentley greens um smashed st albans 4-1 um at kingston heath on friday night then it was a two-all draw between heidelberg united and port melbourne um on saturday as we mentioned um, uh, 5-2 win to Hume City over Moreland City. Um, get this, though. Down Geelong way. North Geelong, who've had a little bit of a disaster this week with the uh, resignation of their coach, Stuart Begg. They were on the wrong end of a 7-0 scoreline. Green Gully absolutely thumping North Geelong. Um, Avondale defeated Melbourne Knights 3-0 at Avenger Park. Um, 3-2 um, was a scoreline at Paisley Park on Saturday night. Altona Magic prevailing over Dandenong Thunder and South Melbourne defeating Oakley Cannons 1-0 in the green in the big Greek derby at Jake Edwards Reserve. So we can see Avondale clearly on top, uh, one point ahead of South Melbourne. Then there's a bit of a gap between um, South and Oakley Cannons, followed by Green Gully, Melbourne Knights and Hume City um, just holding into onto sixth spot ahead of uh, Port Melbourne Sharks on goal difference. So... Um, yeah, things are really, really seem to be hiding up there as far as that is concerned. Um, uh, Urson, now five two. Obviously, Moreland City they 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 had a previously four uh, one win over North Geelong. You've now managed to beat them five two. Um, how with this squad? You, you just mentioned how you've had a long preseason and 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 the boys are really biting into it. Can this squad make the top six in your eyes? Or is there such a big gap at the moment between the top and the bottom in the NPL competition? No, I don't. We don't put, like, it's... I believe the playing group that we have and what we're, what we're building on is definitely a top six side. Um, they... There's a, a lot of new players that have come in and getting used to our football system and the way we like to play. Um, we're still learning about our players that have just come in new, what they like doing and what they don't. So obviously mm-hmm. a coach has a football, I have a football plan and a system, but you have to be a, work with the players and what they like doing as well. So it goes both ways. But definitely with this football team, we can, I'm not putting a target on top six. I believe they can go higher than, you know, top six. It's just I always say this to the playing group. It's what you want out of the out of the games and what you guys want out of the season. And they have done. Yeah. They've created an identity where what they want to do. So I won't go into too much details of their identities, but that's between the playing group and what they want to achieve. So again, what we're doing, we're building something. You know, that's not going to happen overnight, but we can see a lot of positive signs from from compared to last season to this season, which is already we're hitting right step in the right direction. Yeah, now one of those positive signs is um, is a player that uh, is well known to most 
um, Melbourne Victory fans in Brandon Lawton. Uh, obviously, came to the club last year, scoring goals for you, which is uh, which is key for us. For us, uh, centre midfield probably didn't do enough of that last year. Urson, yeah. I think, um, and did lots of running, but didn't have really that end that end product. He certainly scored. Well, he's scoring goals. He scored two so far. Um, What's been the change? Have you got him playing a different role, yeah, a so different well, way? Brandon is it's clearly that he's got the talent. The, the kids certainly got the oh, talent yeah. and probably should be playing at that A League level. Uh, for whatever reason, it hasn't. But this season, he seems to be playing different to what I've seen him play over the last few years. Yeah, he's one of the other players. We can talk about stamina. He can run all day for you, mm. which is, is unbelievable. His running capacity is, is, is really good for us. He played um, about three positions on uh, yesterday afternoon as well. Yeah, so that's, that's, what, that's what I'm getting into now. So, Paul, I'm not going to say Brandon was played out of positions or in different positions last year. When when I came into the club, obviously getting to know the players and talking to the staff that was involved in who's these play. Brandon was playing right back, you know, right mid, six. But he was never given that real chance as a 10 role. Um, and... Obviously, Brandon's such a hard worker. He deserves to play because of what he does on the training park. I mean, he's 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 such a good boy as well. His work rates are fantastic. You know, he buys in. He listens. He can you can give him instructions, and he understands very easily. So it's really easy for a coach. Yeah. So we decided. Obviously, Dylan was injured, and we decided to play Brandon as a ten because he can just one of his attributes is he can just pass a player with dribbling with such ease. Um, it makes it look effortless, and basically we've we've not identified that we need to start getting more plays into the eight, opposition's eighteen yard box because we can create the we can get the ball into the front third, but we just can't get numbers into the box. And with Brandon in there, he carries it into the box. And we can get overloads in wide areas or combination plays in the front third. So he does that really well, and you know his rewards on the training park are showing on the games. He's you said, Craig, he scored two goals. That's actually on the weekend. He scored his third goal. And, um, scored his third. Yeah, so he's doing really well. I mean, he's just – he's such a kid where you can play him anywhere. He says, yep, I'll do a job for you, Gaffer, um, which is what you want, don't you? Especially at this level, it's very hard to have a 20 squad of players where, you know, you've got players at the same levels, you know, at the same age or the same capacity. So you – it's 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 good that he can play in versatile positions, but at the same time he's opening up and seeing things in that ten role where we want, and it's just giving him confidence to play. And I'm always a big believer in giving my players confidence because any player that's on confidence and high confidence can mm. do whatever he puts his mind to in a game. Yeah, yeah and a really yeah. fine-headed goal by him yesterday afternoon, which will give him probably even more confidence, I would say, than heading yeah. into the, ne in the next week. And, yeah. and that's probably a good thing too because you've got two matches coming up this week. Doncaster Rovers in the Australia Cup fourth round. Late kickoff that one, 8.30. That's going to feel yeah. like two in a week yeah. when Daylight Savings has just finished. Yeah. Uh, followed by South Melbourne at uh, at home on Easter Saturday. How do you prepare for such a, a big week with two games? It's going to be yeah, a shock sorry. to the system. Yeah. It's obviously my – everything that I'm – every week that goes by, I'm new to. So, obviously, this is my first proper year as a, as a coach. And player-wise, was different. Player, you just rest, recover, play, rest, recover, play. So, now it's, now it's thinking, what did I do as a player that helped me benefit – before two, three games during a week. So now that's what I'll do. We'll come in tomorrow into training at the club and then we'll identify who's going to play and who's not and who's going to rest and then we'll do training according to that. And then it's just a planning process. Um, obviously, when we come in on Mondays, we'll see who's got the little niggles here and there and then who can train and who can't. So, yeah, it's a tough turnaround, especially... You know, we got Doncaster at a late time, as you said, 8.30, so that's less hours to recover. I mean, there's little things that little details matter. And then we've got, obviously, South, as you said, on, on Saturday at 6.30 at our ground. So, yeah, we obviously will look to rest some players. But, again, we don't take the FA Cup or the Cup very lightly. We obviously, if you've got big history in their Cup, and obviously, you know, the playing group that's there, the, the core, have had very good success in it. And 
we would like to create a history again this year, if possible. So again, yeah, we'll just take it day by day, see where the playing, the playing group is, and then we'll um, go from there. Perfect. Don? All right. All right, well, we'll leave it at that. Um, um, th thanks, Ersin, for coming on the show. We really appreciate that. All the very best uh, for the rest of the season. We look forward to uh, following the fortunes of Hume City in the NPL Victoria competition this year. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you for having me. Thanks Good for the chat, Ersin. Thanks, Ersin. All the best.